Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new and you're stopping by for the first time, welcome. I am so, so happy to have you. I would love it if you become part of the family by clicking the red subscribe button and then tapping the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Those thumbs up really help my channel and share it with your family and friends if you think they would enjoy it too. So, with all that being said, let's jump right into today's DIY. Who I am on my way, I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. Okay guys, so to start off, I just wanted to mention that I saw these stove covers and I really wanted to buy one, but they were way too expensive and I'm cheap and I knew that I could make it for much, much less. So I honestly had all these scrap pieces laying around. My husband is a handyman and we have all kinds of stuff like this, but if you go to Home Depot, it is really, really inexpensive to buy a small piece of wood like this, already sanded, ready to go, and just one piece of trim. So for this project, um, I will leave all the measurements down below, but my husband just cut me a piece that fit right on my stove racks, and then he also cut me these, um, they're just trim pieces, and he just cut them at a 45 degree angle so that they would all sit well and butt right up next to each other really nicely. So I just took my Gorilla Wood Glue and I just glue all my pieces onto my piece of wood all the way around. Now with wood glue, you don't need to go really heavy handed. This stuff expands and it will stick really good with just a little bit. And if you do go a little bit overboard and it does um, seep onto your project, it's really easy to fix. All you have to do is just take some sandpaper and just sand it down and it'll sand right down and you'll never know. So I just put some glue on the inside of my piece as well as on the edge so that way the edges sit really nice together. And again, um, I will leave all the measurements down below. Once I have all my pieces glued down, I want to make sure that these are going to stay really nicely while they're drying. So I just take these little clamps. I believe I got these clamps at Walmart for really, really inexpensive. They were only a couple bucks for a pack of eight, so definitely worth it. But I go ahead and clamp all my pieces down. Now you're going to see here that in the corner, um, the cut was a little bit short, which is no big deal because I just have this wood glue and my husband got this a while ago. He has it in his trailer. So he went out and got it for me. Um, I, I think he said he got it from Home Depot, but you can get wood filler from anywhere. So I just go ahead and squeeze it right down into that crack and you just want to smooth it out with your finger. So this stuff dries really quickly, so does the wood glue. So once everything is dry, I just take my little mini sanding sponge. Um, again, I got this at Walmart as well. And I just go ahead and sand down that wood putty. And this is paintable and stainable wood putty. And that's what I really like about it. And you get a lot in a tube. And it lasts a really long time because you only need a little bit. So I just vacuumed up my surface. Because when you go to stain anything or even paint anything, you don't want little uh, pieces of dust in your piece. So I have my favorite stain, Jaco Bean. If you guys have been around, you know that I use this all the time. It is my favorite color and it matches my kit, my farmhouse kitchen. So that's another reason I really like it. So you always want to be safe, put gloves on because stain is really hard to get off your hands, especially if it's oil based. And you just want to take a paper towel or a foam brush, whatever you have, 
really you can use anything a rag a sock paper towels anything really works for stain and you just want to stain the entire thing so I went on to my computer and I printed out the letter N for our last name and then I printed out also the full name last name Norman and I will leave all the information of the font sizes and the font name itself right down in the description box so if you have any um, questions about what I used I'll leave it all in the description box so you just want to take a piece of graphite paper or scribble on the back and then you just transfer or sorry not transfer you just want to trace the n on or whatever letter you're using you trace that on first and then so that way I could really see what I was doing and where I wanted to place the name I went ahead and colored in the letter first and I did that in black this is your preference you can color this or you know use your paint pen with whatever color you like and this is a black paint pen from Walmart but I have to tell you I do use the white paint pen next from Dollar Tree and surprisingly these paint pens are really really good I would definitely suggest to get your paint pens from Dollar Tree I have seen a bunch of different colors because they're definitely worth a dollar and they're really really nice quality so after I have my N all colored in, I'm just showing you here um, that I printed out the word Norman and I kind of figure out where I want this to go over top of my N because I want my N to shine through, but you also want to see the word Norman like really brightly, if that makes any sense. I know that's not the right wording, but... Um, you want the word Norman to stand out brightly isn't even a word I'm sorry guys so anyway you get your lettering where you want it then you're just gonna hold down one piece slide your graphite paper underneath trace it and then hold the other end and pull it if you don't have a big enough piece to do the whole word then you hold the other end and then pull the graphite paper through and trace it down. I also printed out established or EST 2014 because that is when we got together. So I just um, traced that down the bottom after I printed it out as well. And next I'm going to take my white chalk, not chalk paint, my white paint pen from Dollar Tree I'm so used to saying chalk paint <laughs> but I take my white paint pen and I go over my last name as well as the established 2014 when using paint pens I found that especially with white the best thing to do is do two coats because one coat is not going to be enough after you put two coats it looks really good and it stands out really nicely so I had these handles left over from when we redid my kitchen so I wanted them to match my cabinets I had this other really cool drawer drawer pool and I was going to use it but I did want it to match my kitchen so that's why I'm using these I would not buy them from a hardware store if you want handles go right online they're much cheaper online so in order to get this in the middle the trick is to make a template all I did was put a piece of paper over top of where the screws go in and I press down to make an indent then my husband helped me while I was holding the other edge firm we laid the sign on our drill bit box just to elevate it so that way when you go to drill through you're not drilling through like your fingers or the table so um, after you drill through you always want to use a drill bit drill your 
drill your holes first and then go ahead and attach it. So I just laid my handle down, I stuck the screws up through it and just twisted a few times just to get them in there. I then flipped it over and tightened it with my drill. You can use a screwdriver, you don't need a drill, but we have a drill so we just went ahead and used them. And then you do it on the other side. And that quick and easy and cheap, you guys, it was, it's probably about 10 to 15 bucks to make this. Whereas online, they were like $80. So it's so inexpensive to make your own stuff that looks professionally done. And I am so excited with the outcome. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think. Give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and i will catch you guys in the next one bye